prisoners, but you can find all the Russian prisoners you want are on Ukrainian video. And it's not the same guy in different uniforms. Uh, in fact, the newest one I saw this morning was um, a guy from the, the central, the, the central eastern part of far, far eastern Russia. And, and he's a Buryat, which is, which is um, uh, one of the ethnicities in Kazakhstan. And <clears throat> he had no idea. Uh, he 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 didn't speak Ukrainian. Spoke Russian, so speaking Russian to him, he has no idea he's in Ukraine. Um, all and this is like a really common thing that they don't know where they are. And there was even I saw a captured uh, battalion executive officer, and and he had no idea where he was. But so the General Assembly of the UN, yes, that General Assembly, you know how effective it, and legendarily effective they are during times of conflict. Uh, is going on, and the the same Ukrainian ambassador who confronted the Russian ambassador last week um, is so so. Producer Greg, they did he? It was was it a hot mic or what? What? what uh, no, no, this, open mic. This was a speech to the UN that the Ukrainian ambassador gave just about twenty minutes ago, and he read a text message between a Russian soldier and his mother, apparently moments before he was killed, and it's pretty compelling. Um, and so, and I forget his name. This is the uh, Ukrainian Sergei Kalistisia or something. I'm sure that's the exact. But <laughs> so I butchered that. Yeah. Um, and and by the way, folks, for 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 you to to not, if you don't know, uh, the measure to condemn Russia failed in the Security Council a couple of days ago. Because why wouldn't it? And, but you can then call an extraordinary session of the General Assembly, and then you get all whatever it is, 179 countries. Uh, down there, so you can get everybody on the record. But so anyway, this is uh, the Ukrainian ambassador. And again, this is a letter between a Russian soldier and his mom that he's reading at the UN. Mama, I'm in Ukraine. There is a real war raging here. I'm afraid. We are bombing all of the cities together, even even targeting civilians. We were told that they would welcome us. And they are falling under our armored vehicles, throwing themselves under the wheels and not allowing us to pass. They call us fascists. Mama, this is so hard. And this was several moments before he was killed. Um, yeah, so they had a cell phone. It goes to everything you've been saying for two and a half weeks. Um, uh, yeah, you know, they're telling him... Um, that uh, oh, like like I said on RT, it's oh well, uh, this is Zelensky, he's a Nazi, but wait, he's Jewish. Whatever, he's a Nazi. The Ukrainians are Nazis. There's mass graves full of ethnic Russians, and this is this is a great great example of, for instance, why you don't lie to your troops because you lose if it doesn't come true, you you lose credibility at first contact, which is what the, these guys have done. A lot of the Russian prisoners. Um, in some of the interrogations, are volunteering to, you know, hey, if you let me go and give me a rifle, I'll fight for you guys. And they're, you know, they're they're stunned to find – they tend to be interrogated by uh, ethnic Russians in the Ukrainian army, and um, which they they know exists. They probably are related to them um, and, and, and all this. But the, what, what was funny to me, what was clear to me by last Thursday, was obviously – um, Putin, like any despot in history from, you know, even Napoleon allowed opposing views. But from that point forward, uh, if you're a despot, if you're Saddam, if you're Hitler, uh, whatever, you, you don't want to hear opposing uh, plans, opposing views. And Putin is absolutely that guy because his military people, and he's realizing this, they have failed him badly. They didn't. They failed to characterize because he's never been in the army. They failed to characterize or be self-aware enough to to say, listen, you know, this is not Stalingrad 1940. We don't have human waves. Um, we, we, we couldn't do that without being to draft everybody in the Soviet Union. But we're only in Russia and we're trying to get a more professional army. So we have these contract guys. You know, they will not rush crazily with a bayonet. This is, you know, they're supposed to be better than this, but we can't promise anything. 
Um, but, it, you know, this might be a tough fight. You need to be ready. Instead, they I guarantee they said, oh, our boys will brush them aside without too much of a problem. We'll get an airfield. Once we have an airfield outside of Kiev, we start flying in the heavy junk. We take Kiev. Zelensky probably runs away in a, <clears throat> in a thong and flip-flops and a light coat of oil, screaming, uh, not the face. And uh, then we take Kiev, install a, a, your boy, and then all is well. Bob's your uncle, the whole thing. And they said, you know, we promise. This is a massively consequential moment uh, for the world right now. And I would even venture to say in world history, it's quite a moment even for domestic politics. There's word this morning that Biden's team is revising his first uh, State of the Union address to emphasize Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He wanted to use the opportunity originally to talk about uh, his agenda here at home. But I think, Brian, tomorrow night when he gives this speech, uh, you're going to see more bipartisan applause than you've seen maybe for the last two decades? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, I agree. Not Maybe not since 9-11. But I, but I, do, I do think this is sort of sinking into people that – um, you know, what's going to happen by by tomorrow night, by the State of the Union address, the Belarusian army is going to be involved right there. There's going to be combat right up against NATO um, in, in Poland, Poland and Hungary, Romania. And, at, at you know, at some point, the Europeans, because I mean, it just it can't be us three times in 100 years. But at some point, the Europeans need to say. Listen, you know, Ukraine is sort of like our, you know, our idiot cousin, but he tries hard and he's way better than that evil uh, neighbor. And at some point, the, the Europeans have to say to Putin, you know, we'll dig a ditch between you and Europe. And uh, if you if you do this, because that was a democracy and you're afraid of democracy, but we're not afraid of you. But they, they you know, without our leadership, they won't do this. You know what the Germans finally did beyond the defense and the increase of, of or the stated increase? I'll, I'll believe it uh, when Ish Zaya de Geld, um, I'll believe a 2 percent or 4 percent, whatever they said. But when I see it, but what they are doing is they they have gone ahead and they've said, yep, we're going to build a liquid natural gas reception port because we we have been saying for several years to them, do you understand we can lowball? Putin's natural gas that comes via pipeline, we can put it in liquefied form on ships and we can still lowball him. We can go across the Atlantic with it, you know, tie up in Bordeaux and we and it'll still be cheaper than what you're paying. And they've been saying, oh, no, we don't want to, you know, piss him off. And you know, he's very angry. When, you know, meanwhile, there, there's the French next door to Germany. Ninety percent between 90, 94 percent of their electricity, nuclear. And they're. They're looking at the Germans saying, oh, who's the smart guy now? Um, and so Germany's going to have to completely reset unless they're prepared to, sh- to face this guy down. And unless they're prepared to lose people, then they got to reset their economy. And it has to be a energy based economy from a reliable um, ally and former foe. To- but we are 2-0 oh against them. So maybe we know what we're doing. Can I make an observation that I think is simultaneously encouraging and discouraging? And that is we're seeing something happen on the world stage now that hasn't happened maybe even in American history. And that is some countries are leading the way when America should be the country that's leading the way in terms of France going nuclear, a nuclear renaissance over there. America needs to be doing that in terms of leadership and gravitas and looking to, you know, a symbolic figure who can inspire and encourage a nation. Zelensky is taking over that mantle right now in Ukraine. Um, The comedian. It's usually been traditionally (laughs) American, right? We've been the shining city on the hill. We've been the country to look to as the lead. And so, to me, that's both a good thing and a bad thing happening in real time. Yeah, and, and what we've seen over the past two weeks, uh, where you know the, the United States, you know, has been saying, "Hey, listen, we have practically have a date that this is going to happen." You know, and Zelensky didn't want uh, his economy to tank, so he said, oh, "Let's not panic." So then it happens, and he was expecting, I think, more uh, leadership out of the United States at the UN and and, and the whole thing. Um, and then he get, and then instead over the weekend he gets advice to evacuate and and he says uh, I need ammunition not a ride, which, which is going to go down in history, like I have not yet begun to fight or something from John Paul Jones. We'll be back right, right after right after this. Not the basis from Led Zeppelin, the original John Paul Jones. 
Uh, back in the second AM seven seventy K.